Hey everyone, this is Michael for Spirit Comics. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please do subscribe and smash that notification bell. Like She-Hulk so you don't miss any new uploads. Please do like and share this video with others so they can enjoy it as well. Don't forget to leave, don't forget to leave your comments down below. Alright, now I'll bring you an article that came out uh, just uh, yesterday, October, October 4, 2018. DC's Brian Michael Bendis unveils new imprint Wonder Comics. Oh boy. I saw this link and I had to check it out. Because there's been suspicion, that there's been, people have suspected that Dan Didio is bring back the new 52 and this further proves it it starts off saying following the announcement of its young adult and young readers imprints DC Entertainment announced a further push towards younger readers at New York Comic Con Thursday with writer Brian Michael Bendis revealing the details of his curated pop-up imprint Wonder Comics and I have no idea what the pop-up part means now the problem here is will this be in continuity and I've checked out the uh, I've uh, been this I've seen statements from him saying yes it will but why is that a problem, you ask? Well, just hold on to your horses here. Talking at the DC Meet the Publishers panel, Bendis, whose tenure at DC started earlier this year, after almost two decades at Marvel, said that the new imprint, which will feature four ongoing series set inside the core comic book continuity of DC's mainline, is inspired by that quote moment you discover who you're going to be and what your place in life is going to be but you're going to have to fight for it okay for one thing I don't know what he's been smoking <laughs> but nobody when they when they become a young adult knows what they're going to be for example, I can tell you when I graduated from high school in 1993. You know, that people would uh, make, I would read the pages and some people like the cheerleaders would uh, make these very lofty uh, comments of what they were going to do or what they wanted to do in life because they presumably knew who they were. Well, as it turns out, life changed for them. So they knew who they were at the time. They knew who they wanted to be. But the fact is, even if you know what you want to be, that does not mean you will be what you want to be because life has a way of throwing you curveballs. So this here, from Bendis, this is just giving kids false hope. Okay, let's continue. The four titles will fe feature mix revivals of existing characters and concepts with all new material. All new, all new, all new, all new. Let's see, where have I heard that phrase before? Where have I heard that phrase before? All new. Oh yeah, Marvel! And that uh, all new line they have did not last. Anyway, we'll feature mixed revivals of existing characters and concepts with all new material and new incarnations of familiar ident identities and names. The flagship of the line will be Young Justice, written by Bendis which teams Robin, Tim Drake, who Bendis calls 
called the best Robin. Impulse, which I think is the son of Flash, or somehow related to him. Superboy, oh, look, look here, and Superboy, Connor Kent. The 90s, the 1990s version of the character with a number of new characters, including Jenny Hex, a descendant of DC Western character Jonah Hex, and Teen Lantern. Seriously? A young girl from Bolivia who has featured, figured out a way to hack the power battery from the Green Lantern Corps. Okay. Now, I'm probably not the only person who sees problems with this. Currently, in DC Comics, we have Jonathan Samuel Kent, who's about 10 or 11 years old. Now, he is a fictional superhero appearing in American comic books published, published by DC Comics, created by Dan Jurgens, you know, somebody who's not M Brian Michael Bendis. And since Bendis has taken over the Superman titles, it seems from what I've heard over and over that he's doing everything humanly possible to deconstruct Superman and his family. In other words, retcon it. Now the character first appeared in Convergence, Superman number two, July 2015. He is the son of Superman slash Clark Kent and Lois Lane, and is the newest character in the DC Universe to assume the superhero persona of Superboy. So, it just goes to beg the question. How can you have two Superboys in the same continuity at the same time? It makes no sense. So, in order for that to happen, you know, it, it's just, it just makes sense that one of them has to go. Like, you know, it did not make sense to me that there were two characters by the name of Wally West, the original, the redhead, and then there was uh, the newer one, the the kid who wore the original Wally West costume. So it didn't it didn't make sense to me that there was two of them. So eventually they they did something I think. And didn't uh, the original Wally West get killed? I'm, a little bit behind. But it will not make sense for Superman to have two sons by the name of Superboy. No matter if it's the clone or, or not because you know it just it's not it doesn't make any sense. That Connor Kent, this one, did appear in DC Re Rebirth. And here's uh, the entry in, on uh, Wikipedia. Take it for, you know, what it is. In DC Rebirth, the mantle of Superboy is held by Jonathan Samuel, John Kent, the son of Kal-El and Lois Lane, with Connor seemingly having never existed. But guess what? Brian Michael Bendis is going to bring him back, even though he hasn't existed in the current continuity. Am I the only person that's, who sees the, the stupidity in this? Anyway, Connor Kent slash Superman from the Titans Tomorrow timeline makes an appearance in Detective Comics 966. I have that. Where he asked Tim Drake slash... Batman to return to the Titans. Tim is subsequently captured by Mr. Oz but escapes with the younger present day Tim Drake. Before 
sending the younger Tim back to the past. The older Tim asked his younger self to reconcile his friendship with Connor. The young Tim Drake responds that he doesn't know who Connor is, leading the older Tim to realize that time has been altered. The New 52, Con L, is also lightly referenced in Red Hood and the Outlaws when the Outlaws and the Suicide Squad explore a nowhere facility and Bizarro whose brain chemistry was enhanced making him smarter had Deadshot and Captain Boomerang accompany him to shut down the facility's main generator as he was aware that since it was designed to be protected against Kryptonians due to another clone. With Harvest and Connell seen in a, in a flashback. And, and Bizarro knew he would die if he attempted to shut it down by himself. When post-rebirth Superman reviews his own life story, which incorporates elements of the pre and post Flashpoint Superman. Connell is not mentioned as one of the replacements who arose following Superman's death at the hands of Doomsday. The Titans of Tomorrow version of Connor later appeared in the Super Sons of Tomorrow crossover where he, along with his universe's his universe version of Wonder Woman and the Flash, travel back to the past to prevent their unhinged teammate Tim Drake Batman from killing John. He would later help stop John's solar flare power from going out of control before they return to their time. Connor chooses not to disclose any information to Superman to prevent it from affecting the future. The, that means the old timeline is still in place. In essence, you know, the events of the New 52, Connor Kent, are still erased. But yet, we have Mr. I Think I Can Do Anything I Want bring him back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I continue on with this article, I want to remind you that the only way this stuff will flourish is if you open your wallet to a monstrosity like this. If you close your wallet, if you vote with your wallet, that says volumes. And for crying out loud, and Teen Lantern, Teen Lantern couldn't even give her a proper name? A young girl from Bolivia who has figured out a way to hack the power battery of the Green Lantern Corps. Now, who does that sound like? A young girl with a lot of smarts. Oh yeah! The one character no one ever asked for or wanted. Riri Williams. Brian Michael Bendis is slowly turning DC Comics into Marvel Comics. Alright, continuing. Other titles in the line include revivals for the cult Super Friends characters, The Wonder Twins, written by the Flintstones' Mark Russell and art by Stephen Byrne, and the class and classic 1950s comic book Dial H for Hero, written by Sam Humphreys and il illustrated by Joe Quinn. Quinn I can't pronounce that name. And I've heard of Dial H for Hero, but I don't know anything about it, so I can't say anything one way or another. Additionally, the line will feature 
an all new creation, Naomi, co written by Bendis and Nighthawk, and Bitter Roots, David Walker. So they're bringing back this character called Nighthawk, if I read that correctly. This is HollywoodReporter.com. Both DC Comics and Marvel Comics have characters in their arsenal by the name of Nighthawk. The line will launch in January 2019 with the first issues of Naomi and Young Justice of Naomi and Young Justice and I will not buy either of them. This is an opportunity to, opportunity to express a lot of themes I was already deal huh? Let me try that again. This is an opportunity to express a lot of themes I was already deal with when w deal this is an opportunity to express a lot of themes I was already deal with with Miles Morales and Riri Williams okay I guess I'm guessing that the, this uh, website has no editor that moment of life when everything is at its most passionate you're at your most emotional most powerful alright news flash even if you are at your most passionate and your most emotional that doesn't mean jack squat because those are feelings and if you don't use your feelings meaning your heart and your brain together you're gonna end up with stuff like Riri Williams or in this case Teen Lantern Teen Lantern for crying out loud I couldn't give her a better name than that oh gosh Bendis said about the imprint it's literally a list of things people have been screaming at me to bring to DC Comics yeah, I'm sure. And I'm Santa Claus, which I don't believe in. At the panel, DC Entertainment Publishers, Jim Lee and Dan Dit Didiot introduced Marv Wolfman, the co-creator of the new Teen Titans and Crisis on Infinite Earths. He will be writing a new comic book based on an upcoming line of action figures by Funko called DC Primal Age, intentionally created to resemble the DC comic books of the 1980s. Attendees of the panel were presented with exclusive DC Primal Age action figures as the panel ended. That m might be the only good title that's coming up but which titles are DC Comics going to axe off because I know already that Red Hood and the Outlaws is getting the axe with issue 27 this crap cannot be good it can't I, I, I'm sorry ladies and gentlemen This is the same stuff that Bendis pulled at Marvel. Except this time, he's giving this Naomi her own title. I mean, really? A, a brand new character, her own title? I mean, that's basically a crapshoot. Because I, New Superman was a good book, but it was a book 
about a brand new superhero, brand new character. I think it would have been better if the new Superman character had been introduced in Superman's books previously and then moved to his own book eventually but but that didn't happen I, I have to say this ladies and gentlemen this is going to fail it's going to fail big time but the biggest r red flag is Naomi You know, they, they all knew creation Naomi and the Teen Lantern. I mean, they just do, doesn't sound good. So that's it for this video. If you are new to my channel, Spirit Comics, please do subscribe. Smash that notification bell, like she up, so you don't miss any new uploads. And please do like and share this video with others so they can enjoy it as well. And don't forget to comment down below. Till next time, readers. I am Michael for Spirit Comics.